Hey guys, and welcome back to our journey in Fire Ash. Kanto and Jodo are already behind us. Now it's time for the Hoenn region. After we arrive in the region, the first thing which we do here is to speak with Professor Birch and to meet May. Our team completely obliterates her, and we are gifted our first Pokemon of the region, Torchic. Before we continue to Route 101, we stay a little bit longer in Little Root and fish for a Wingle here. Entering Route 101 is where the real fun begins. We add Wild Poochiana and Duskull here. Using the old reliable in the little ponds, there's also Wild Relicant on this route. A bit random, but okay. Passing Old Dale Town and straight onto Route 102, the fun continues. I caught two Seedot, Zigzagoon, two Wurmple, two Ralts, one male and one female, Surskit and Lotad here. Bringing the dex total to 274 Pokemon. Pedalburg lies in the west, and beside meeting up May again, the only thing we can do here to advance is to beat her dad, Norman. I hope he remembers our legendary bird well, because we will be back for him later. On to Route 104, our journey in Hoenn continues. And before entering the Pedalburg Woods, we stop to catch Rumish and the Taylor here. In the Pedalburg Woods, well, there is an iconic Taylor waiting for us. So, even though I already caught one, the little fella can sure join up our team. The woods are quite a big area, with lots of grass and new Pokemon to catch, like the Viper and Cacnea. After adding those up, there is yet another Pokemon which you can add to our Pokedex. Hidden within the Pedalburg Woods, there is an iconic Trico, which joins up too. Well, that's two starter Pokemon before the first gym. Quite cool. We leave the forest north and find ourselves on the other half of Route 104. And head straight to Rustboro. Rustboro is a dead end for now until we advance with the story. So let's see what else we can do here before we take on the gym. For one, there's Team Rocket here. And one blasting off later, Roxy tells us that she's ready for a gym battle. We are not quite ready yet to beat her though. Remember that I caught two C dot earlier? There's an NPC which trades a Makuhida here. So we gladly accept this trade. Now, with the first dead end in Hoenn, let's get to evolve what we have and advance with the Professor Oak Challenge. As a quick reminder for those of you who entered the video series here for some reason, we have to catch and evolve all Pokemon we can get until we can take on the next gym. Returning back to our most favorite training spot on Route 1, we use the Repel trick to fight Ho-Oh over and over again. As usual, and manage to evolve our Torchic into Combusken and Blaziken at level 36. Makuhita into Hariyama, Puchiana into Maitiana, Wingull into Pelipper at level 25, Seedot into Nuzleaf, and using a Leaf Stone, Nuzleaf into Shiftry, Zigzagoon into Lainoon, one Wurmple into Silicoon, and I got lucky and the other Wurmple evolved into Casku. After that I evolved both of them into their final evolution, Dustox and Beautifly. Our female Ralts we did evolve into Curlia, and Curlia evolved into Gardevoir at level 30. We don't have access to a Dawnstone yet, so Galate will be a thing later. Surskit evolved into Masquerade, Shroomish into Breloom, Tailu into Swellow, Lotad into Lombre, and using a Waterstone, Lombre into Ludicolo. Anyone here remembers Mirror B? I do. Anyways, Cacnea evolves into Cacturn, Duskull into Dusclops at level 37. We will get its final evolution a little bit later. And finally our other starter Trico into Gruvile and into a Sceptile at level 36. Wow, what a mouthful. With all the Pokemon we can get up to this point, we can finally take on Roxy. After obtaining her badge, Mr. Briny now offers us to get to Dewford Town. Before we take on the gym there, we immediately head north and go for the Granite Cave. In here we add Morwell, Loudred, Aaron and Sableye to the dex total. 
Also, we meet Steven, which is nice, I guess. He gives us a hint where we could advance through the cave and after doing so, it is time to see what's outside. Immediately we find ourselves into a battle with Brock. And after defeating him, we are free to look around a little bit more. There's an iconic corp fish here, which joins up our team. Also, using the rod, we can fish for wild Kavana. A bit up further north, an old man tells us about his mudkips. And you know what? This is where we get our last hoe and stuff. So, the next thing usually which you should do now is to take on the Dewford gym. Since we acquired a lot of new Pokemon here, we need to take care of those first. Returning back to Kanto, the first thing I did was breeding our Loudred to get a Whismur, since we couldn't get one in the Granite Cave. I evolved Loudred afterwards to get x -Cloud. Aaron into a Laron and into an Agron at level 42. Corpfish evolved into a less tasty looking form and Kavana into Shapido. Finally, our Mudkip evolved into Marshdomp and into Swampert at level 36. After all, this section didn't took too long, so the next thing I did was go back to Dewford and take on Brawly. Defeating him... well, we need to defeat him twice. Defeating him for real now results in us getting our second Hoenn badge. And Mr. Briny also now takes us to a new location, Route 109. Route 109 is just south of Slateport City. And I can tell you I'm very happy to finally arrive here. You see, up until this point I heavily needed to rely on Ultra Balls, which not only suck, let's be honest, but they are also quite expensive. You know what is sold at Slateport? Level Balls. And you know what goes very well with Level Balls? An overpowered Ho-Oh! Also I can get some evolution items here like the Reaper Cloth, the Protector and the Dubious Disc. Not all evolution items unfortunately, but at least some of them. We immediately use the power of shopping to get all Pokeballs and evolution items we need and start to evolve the Pokemon we can. This way I evolved Dusclops and evolved it into a Dusk Noir, Porygon 2 into Porygon Z, Sneasel into Weavile, Gligar into Gliscor and Rhydon into Rhyperia with it holding the protector. While still in Slateport, we get entangled into the scheme of Team Magma, but defeat them quickly. After doing so, the contest hall is our next goal, since we can't advance until we showed Mei who's the boss here. One obliteration later, and we are allowed to enter Route 110. There's an NPC which will grant us a new rod after answering his questions. And you could have guessed it, the rod gives us new fishing opportunities. For now, let's continue north and stay on Route 110. While being here I caught a Plazzel, Minen, Electric, Galpin and, when using the good rod here, a Whelmer. A little bit further north begins Marvel City. As usual I tried to test how far I could reach from this point without a gym badge. The east exit is blocked, the west exit too, but the north onto Route 111 seems to be open. Before leaving too quickly though, there's a little bit more business we have to do in Marvel. And with that I mean Game Corner related business. RIP money. <sighs> well, after turning into a poor man again, at least I had the opportunity to add Beldum, Bagon and a way overpriced cast form here. Has like anyone ever used cast form? Like ever? Also two pseudo legendaries. This time I was a little bit smarter and immediately put both of them in the daycare. And with seemingly Marvel's gym being skippable, I made my way north to Route 111 again. Here I got an Illumisi, Volbeat and a Skiddy. And when using the rod a Barboach too. Within Route 111 is the Mirage Kingdom. When the Hoenn part of the anime came out, I already didn't watch the anime anymore that much, so pardon me if I didn't get all the references here. Anyways, with that personal note aside, we meet Misty here and get our very own Togepi. On to Route 111 again. Eventually we come across a pathway which leads to a dead end, since Route 112 isn't reachable yet. But we can advance further north onto Route 113. 
Honestly, I'm still amazed how open Hoenn is at this point. On Route 113, in the middle of yet another sandstorm, I managed to add Spinder, Skarmory and Trapinch to the dex total. Eventually I arrived in Falibur Town. Not much to do here, but when entering the contest hall, we have yet another meetup with Team Rocket again. You know the drill. Defeating them makes an NPC opening the path to Laverage, and so we head there. Between Falibor and Laverage Town is the Fiery Path, and with a quick stop to get ourselves a new mill here, we reach Laverage. The gym is unfortunately closed until we defeat Watson first, but the trip wasn't completely worthless. You see, there's an NPC which trades a magic carp for a Phoebus here. I still have my SSN magic carp, so maybe this guy is happier with it than I am. And I have a new Pokemon in my decks. Coming from this side, we can take the shortcut back to Route 111 over Route 112. But before doing so, let's stay here to get Swablu, Lunatone, and Solrock to our dex total. Also, there's the Steel Valley here. A small cave where Ash Torkoal joins up. Ultimately, before we start evolving our Pokemon, our last stop will be the Safari Zone in Kanto again. Because now we have the good rod, we can fish for yet another Pokemon in the Jodo area. Mantine. Well, that were quite a lot of new Pokemon we got here, but we hit a dead end again. So let's get the party started. That Mantine I just caught, I immediately bred with it holding the incense to get Mantike. I evolved Veilmer into Waylord at level 40, which isn't fun with scaled leveling, but yeah. Barboach into Whiskash, Togepi into Togetic with enough happiness, and Togetic into Togekiss with that one shiny stone we picked up way back in Jodo. Skiddy evolved into Delcaddy after being rubbed with a moonstone in its face. Electric evolved into Manetric, Galpin into Swallot, Swablu, which German name is just Wablu, without the S for some reason, into Altaria, Numel into Camerup, and Phoebus into Melodic, with the evolution scale from the Slateboard market. Trapinch evolved into Vibraba and into a Flygon at level 45. And finally, after a very long time of daycare and ho o grinding, Beldum evolved into Metang and into Metagross and Bagon into Shellgon and into Salamence. That took forever. Well, I returned back to Hoenn and entered a Morville gym. Defeating Watson was no problem whatsoever, as you could have guessed, and we got ourselves a Dynamo badge. I tried to skip Flannery's gym, but Norman wasn't still there, so I made my way back to Leverage, and got the Heat badge as well. The way west of Morville is open now and we can head to Verdant Turf over Route 170. But unfortunately there is nothing here. No Pokemon and nothing else of interest. So to advance with the story now, it is time to face Norman. Returning back to Paddleburg, I crushed May and her dad, getting yet another badge for the collection. With now Watson, Flannery and Norman defeated, the way east of Morville is now finally open. So let's explore Route 118. I took a quick stop here after defeating the trainers and got myself a Spoink. Before we arrive in Fortree City, we still have to cross the large Route 119. Before advancing too much though, I got myself a new Pokemon here, Shuppet. The Weather Institute is also located here and, like in the games, it is infested with an evil team. Before taking care of that though, we find ourselves another Master Ball laying around. Remember that one episode with the guy trying to catch a Whiskash with the Master Ball? Master Ball, go! Whiskash! Ah! Come on, why'd you do that? Whiskash, Whiskash. That was so bullshit. Well, time to clear out the Weather Institute. As a thanks of freeing them, we get yet another cast form. I really start to hate those things. Fortree is now open to us, and after a quick stop at the Pokemon Center, there is a guy claiming to sell us a Chimeco. Unfortunately, we get scammed, and that Chimeco turns out to be a Hoppin. There's a short meetup with Brock again, and after defeating him, we can take to Venona. 
She says that she will return to the gym and wait for us there. But you know what? We Nona can wait a little bit longer, since Route 120 is completely open to us. Here on Route 120, there's Slackoth and Chimeco, a real one this time, for us to catch here. Over on Route 121, we can use the rod again to add two Clamp Pearl and Love Disc to our dex total. Before arriving in Lily Cove, we take a quick detour to get ourselves a Soul Dew, which is laying around there for some reason. Lily Cove is another special place in Hone, since in its department store we can get the last evolution items missing, like the Dawnstone and the Duskstone from the bug catching contest we couldn't get earlier. Buying and using them, we managed to evolve our male Curlia into Galate, finally Murkrow into Honchcrow, Miss Dreavis into Miss Magius, and having the Clam Pearls holding the Deep Sea Scale and Tooth, we get the evolutions Huntail and Gorobus. I still think that it looks creepy. Our Slackoth we got earlier evolved into Vigoroth and into Slacking at level 36, Shoppet evolved into Bennett and Spoink into Grumpik. Ultimately, because we caught a Chimeco earlier, we also have access to its pre-evolution, and so I bred my Chimeco with it holding the right incense to get Qingling. Before now heading to Moss Deep for our next gym, we take yet another quick detour to deal with Team Magma and Team Aqua once and for all. With the help of Lance, we managed to defeat them. With them out of the way, the legendaries are available, and so I caught Groudon and Kyogre which wasn't too much of a problem with the level balls. Our way to Moss Deep is now opened, and with all Pokemon evolved and caught, let's take on the gym. With Tate and Liza out of the way, our next goal is Sutopolis. But the teleport guy kinda overshot the target, and we land on Izabi Island. Well, we still have to get to Sutopolis somehow, so we make our way to the other side of the island, where a boat could take us to our destination. To get there we have to cross the forest and the desert. In the desert we take a quick stop, because an NPC is giving us the two local fossils, the claw and the root fossil. I also got a clay doll here and its pre-evolution, Baltor. Out of the desert directly into the ice cave, we ran into Team Rocket yet another time, who seemed to be a bit lost as well. Once they are dealt with, I took an iconic Snorunt with me and made sure to get another one of the opposite gender. I made my way through the cave and got myself yet another Pokemon here, Absol. Outside of the ice cave we finally arrive on the other side of the island, and from there we can take the ship to Sutopolis. But not so fast, before taking on the gym here we have something else to do. You know the drill. All the way back in Kanto at the Cinnabar Islands lab, I revived my fossils to get Lilip and Anorith. After some training on Route 1, I got my two fossils into their final evolution, and both of my Snorrens into Glalie and Frostless, respectively. Now with that out of the way, the Sutopolis gym is open to us, and we defeat Juan, earning the Rain Badge. In the Pokemon Center, Nurse Joy tells us that May is waiting for us in Pacifiloc Town. But before going there, a new legendary appeared. Back in Fallabur Town, Jiraji is now available to catch, and we gladly add it to the team. In Pacifiloc Town, we meet up with Mei again, before going to the Evergrande Conference to take on the Hoenn League. As you may already know from the Indigo and Silver League Conference, it's the same business as usual. Register, first stage, second stage, third stage, and some bullshit anime shenanigans, and losing. After at least placing top 8, we exit the League building, only to get greeted by Professor Oak's aide. He tells us that Oak wants to see us back in Palatown. We do exactly that and go back to Palatown. Oak tells us that the battle frontier opened in Kanto. Perfect timing. Let's take on that. Before starting the battle frontier series, let's go back to Hoenn for a last time, to get two more legendaries. Outside on Lily Cove City, on Route 121, there's Latias and Latios to catch for us here. Back in Viridian City, we meet up with Scott, who managed to build the destroyed gym again. He wants us to defeat Agatha of the Elite Four, and we gladly do. After doing so, we are gifted with the Frontier Pass. The Battle Frontier journey can begin. 
we start by going to Cerulean City. There, after beating up Misty for a second time, on Route 4 there is a new area, which wasn't accessible before. The Battle Factory. Those frontier challenges are basically like your gym battles, so for the sake of the Professor Oak challenge, I handle them the same as gym badges. Although I won't count them for the badge total though, since you don't get badges. With that out of the way, I faced Noland in the Battle Factory. And after a short burp fight, I got my first symbol, the Knowledge Symbol. Our next goal is Saffron City. In there the dojo next to the gym is now open. And for the sake of completion, we do that as well. In the south part of Saffron there is yet another new area, the Battle Arena. We take on Greater and get our next symbol, the Gut Symbol. Lavender Town is next. And now the south exit onto Route 12 is now open to us finally. No new Pokemon to get here, but we ran into Team Rocket again, in the Pokemon Breeding Center, trying to steal some Pokemon eggs. We send them towards space again and continue onto Route 13, where the next battle facility is located. Before heading inside though, we go a little bit more south onto Route 14, since there is a new legendary awaiting us here. It is also our last Johto Pokemon missing. Celebi. After getting it with my first quick ball, I enter the battle dome and fight Tucker and his Arcanine. Defeating him will get us the tactic symbol. The next facility is located in a new area in the safari zone. Fuchsia is around the corner, so it didn't took long to arrive there. Inside of this new safari zone area, I stop to get a Tropius, a nose pass, and by fishing a Sphil here. After defeating Brock, the battle pike is open for us, but since I handle those more or less like the gyms, I need to evolve the Pokemon I got now. Doing so, I evolved Nosepass in Hoenn on Route 110, since it has a special magnetic field to get a Probopass. Sfeel into Sea Leo and to Walrein. With that out of the way, I entered the battle pike and faced Pike Queen Lucy, earning myself the luck symbol. Battle Palace is our next destination. To get there, we go to Cinnabar Island and take the boat to Metallica Island. Here I can get a Meditite and because of its high level, with a rare candy, I immediately evolved it into Medichem. No more Pokemon to get here, so I immediately fought Spencer, earning the Spirit Symbol. The penultimate facility is west of Viridian City, south of the Indigo League. Going there, now we have access to Route 26. No new Pokemon to get here as well, so let's head straight into the battle tower. Business as usual and with Annabelle defeated, we get the ability symbol. Before now taking on the last facility, a new legendary appears, right here on Route 26, where we are. The legendary this time is Deoxys. It took a bit of time, but with Deoxys added, I made my way to Pewter City and onto the new exit in the west. The battle pyramid is located here and after a short battle with Brock, I meet the head of the pyramid. Uh, pyramid head? Brandon, just outside. We have to defeat him and his Regis three times, this time crushing his Reggie rock. Inside of the pyramid for a second battle, we melt down his Reggie steel. Before taking on him a third time though, when exiting the building, a sneaky Apom steals our battle pass unfortunately, and we have to track it down. It seems to have run off to the Indigo Plateau, and so we make our way there. Unfortunately we can't find Apom yet, but after talking with Mei, she tells us that it's somewhere near the entrance. We get our Frontier Pass back and Apom joins up our team. Brandon is now ready for the third battle. We are as well, and after defeating him we get the last symbol, the Brave symbol. We also successfully become the Battle Frontier champ and enter the Hall of Fame for yet another time. Now that we have completed the Frontier Challenge, let's head home to Pallet Town. Before doing so, three Pokeballs appear in the Battle Pyramid, it containing the three Regis. Of course, we take them with us and make our way back to Pallet Town. Mei stops us for a last time, telling us that she will now head for the Johto region. In Pallet Town, we run into Gary, who is trying to flex with his Sinnoh Pokemon. After defeating him, we speak with Oak. He tells us that we should go for the Sinnoh region next and try for the leak there. We change our clothes for yet another time and head straight to Vermilion, taking the boat to Sinnoh. 
With now 407 Pokemon registered and after about 72 in-game hours, we arrive in Sinnoh. So what Hoenn Pokemon are still missing? Again, not many. We are missing Zangoose, Ninkada and its evolutions and Rayquaza for now, but that will change soon. Well, that's it for this section of the Professor Oak Challenge in Fire Ash. As usual, thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you liked the challenge so far and stay tuned for more. Special thanks to the Fire Ash and Professor Oak Challenge Discord in particular. All of you guys have been very helpful and friendly lately, so big thanks to that. Make sure to check the discords out as well, link in the description as usual. What more to say? Until the next time. See ya!